In this video of ADO.NET, we are going to perform the CRUD operations. CRUD operation basically stands for the create, read, update and delete where you can insert a new record, update the existing, delete the existing record or can read the existing data in the table. So let's see all these operations practically. Alright, so for performing the CRUD operation, this is the form which I have created for the departments table. So before proceeding, let me show you the structure of the departments table. As here you can see, like in this table, we have three columns like department ID of integer type, department name and location ID. So now we will be performing the crude operation for this particular table. I have particularly chosen this particular table so that because it is smaller in size, not having so much columns, so the queries which I'll write will be easy to understand for you. Now, the way I'll be doing the things for this table, you can similarly do it for any other bigger table as well. So let's proceed with the implementation. As here you can see I have these five buttons and each button is performing something like first of all let's go for the add new. What I want is uh, when I click on add new the next available department ID should be here automatically. For example this is 10, 20, 30 means you can see like uh, uh, the IDs are generated in the difference of 10 alright. So what I want is the next ID should be generated automatically like next available would be 90. So that's what I want to generate automatically. So for that, what I have done is in this button code, I have simply made a query like select max department ID. All right. So this will give you 80. And what we need to do is we just need to add the 10 into that. So if 80 is the max department ID, the next ID will be 90 and uh, that is what we will get. So what I have done here like the previous statement I just made a command and then command uh, SQL command object is initialized using this command and the connection and again there is a con connection open connection closed and in between I have executed this command and for executing this command of select max department ID I have used a method called execute scalar. This execute scalar basically executes any select statement and it will only return the one cell that is the first cell of the table. So we will execute preferably only those commands here which is returning me a single data like this command is doing and the return type of execute scalar is object. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just converting that to an integer and then storing it in the int id. All right you can do that as well like you can also take this uh, ID as a string type because later we will be assigning it in the uh, text box text and text property is always a string. So what I can I do is I can simply just remove this and we'll do one thing like dot to string and later I don't need to do this because ID is now automatically of integer string type. All right. So this is the uh, command execute scalar as you can see in the description also from the Microsoft executes the query and returns the first column of the first row in the result set returned by the query and additional columns and rows are ignored. So I will just get a single value and that will be assigned to this text of department ID. So let me execute this to check whether it's working fine or not. So if I'll make a click here you see I got 90. All right. So this is what our requirement is and uh, it's working fine. I've also created one reset method out here uh, for a simple purpose like uh, it will clear all the text boxes to a blank and will set the focus on the first text box. So I'll, I can call it anytime I require. All right. So now uh, once I have uh, generated the ID by entering the new department name and location I will be able to insert a new data and for that what I have done is I have read all the text boxes like txt department id, department name and location id. I have already renamed all the text boxes logically so it will be easier for us to understand and for a beginner it is also a good practice for him or her to rename the controls as per the requirement.
Now I have used the text property in order to get the details of those uh, values. Now I just made a command like a string command is equal to string format insert into TBL departments and then values. So it's a very straightforward uh, code for the insert statement. All right. And here I have used string.format method so that I can use the placeholders like this. So since the first column is of integer type, uh, I don't need to pass any single quotations. The second column that is department name is of varchar type. So I have included the single quotations as well. And the second one that is the uh, third column of location again of integer type. So this is how I uh, made a query. All right. And then again, I will initialize the SQL command object through this command and the connection. So after opening the connection, I will execute the non query. In the previous example, al also I have discussed about the execute non query, which will be used for executing any DML method. And then after execution, I close this connection and I reset the uh, controls. So every control will be blank now. So let's see whether it's working fine or not again. So add new it's 90. Let's put the name admin location to say save. It's working fine. I guess let's check in the database because I have not given any message there. And yes, as the data I entered 90 admin and two, it got inserted successfully. All right, fine. Now let's talk about the next button. That is the search button. And again, uh, it will be using a different m method to execute the command because here I'll be making a select statement again. And I don't want only a single data. I want all the records means all the complete information for that particular record. All right. So now inside this, what I have done is I have taken a code here in which first of all, uh, for searching the data, I will have to get the department ID on the basis of department ID. I'm making the search. So I will first of all, enter the something in the text box. Then I will, uh, on that particular value basis, I will start the searching. So it's a very simple command right here, like select asterisk from departments where department ID is equal to this value. All right. So, uh, what it will do, it will just fetch for that particular value. Now, there may be two situations, either that department ID would be existing in the table or it will not. So I'll have to take care of both the cases. So let's see what is ahead of it. So again, like always, I have taken a command object and initialized with the SQL command, uh, with the command and the connection. All right. Then I opened the connection before executing the command as always. And here I use the execute reader, execute reader. Uh, is a method in the SQL command class, which actually gives you a SQL data reader type of data. And here this SQL data reader will every time make a round trip with the database server in order to find something. All right. So it will just execute, but it is not in a particular, it is not pointing to a particular record right now means in this particular statement. So to make a read operation, this data reader would be having a method called read and it will return you a boolean. So what it will do, it will go to the database, will fetch the record. If the data is uh, there, it will read that and it will return a true. So if it is, it's having a data so then it will read it and will return a true. If it is true, will come inside this condition. Uh, the department ID is already entered. So what I need to do is I will just take the department name and location ID and the structure of that particular record will be similar to the data row, which we have already discussed in the disconnected architecture. So here, uh, DR one means the second column I'm accessing. Either you can pass a name or index like this. All right. And it will be returning you object type value, uh, this combinedly. So I need to convert that to the string so that the values can be assigned to this text boxes. In case the read operation is failed means that particular department ID is not existing. I'll give you a message cannot find the record. 
with a button and icon and then I will reset the controls all right and then connection close reader close all right so let's execute it and see whether it's working fine or not like the last ID which is existing there in the table is uh, 90 now I'm entering 100 let's see it's saying cannot find the record and it is clear if I enter anything else cannot find the record and again all right now but if I'll enter something valid and will do the searching I will get the record for sure all right like this like this all right so uh, this is the search operation that I have done here using the execute reader method and what I have done I have taken the SQL data reader as I said every time when it will uh, will search a record it will this data reader will make a round trip with the database so for single value it's fine but for the bulk amount of value it's not a good idea the better idea we will discuss in our coming videos but for now since we are just making a search of a single record you can proceed with this method as well now next is the update so what my idea is like when I will do the searching like let's say department 20 IT I want to update it to the information technology alright so I'll enter something and we'll say update so here the department ID updation is not allowed on the basis of department ID you can change the location ID or the uh, department name so that is what the requirement is so here again first of all we have read all the three text boxes assign the value in the variables uh, written a very simple update statement update TBL department set department name is equal to this location ID is equal to this where department ID is equal to this so in zeroth position name it will go here location will go here and ID will come here alright so this is how I just simply read this statement now as always I'll initialize the SQL command with the command and the connection I'll open the connection since it is DML I will execute with using non query I will close it and after I'll give a message alright so let's see whether it's working fine or not so let's go for 30 alright let's go for 20 and here IT I'll con uh, change it to the information technology alright say update record updated and let's come to the database to find the changes and now here you can see 20 is being converted to information technology so similarly you can change any particular field out there and the very same thing will be done on the delete also like string ID is equal to I for deletion I don't want all the details just ID is enough for me so I just took the first uh, value that is the department ID and when I'll click this department this uh, department will be deleted so for that delete from TBL departments where department ID is equal to whatever ID you will enter alright so again this particular same thing is done like initializing the SQL command opening the connection executing the command closing the connection giving the message and resetting the uh, control so let's see again 90 search alright let's say delete record deleted and let's confirm coming the database execute and 90 is gone away alright so here uh, it's a very simple straightforward code for each and every operation there were three methods which I covered here like execute scalar execute non query and execute reader and each has a specific way to do the things once you are done with the small table you can also go for the bigger tables having more than uh, three or four columns maybe 10-15 columns as per your requirement and can proceed in the very same way